Today we're going to be talking about elements of graphic design. Uh, a lot of times we don't know how to do layouts and where to place uh, different uh, objects in our design. So this lesson is to help us in that area. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. Uh, These are some of the things I learned about a year ago. Um, for when I, uh, first of all, you see this image, right? It's pretty bad <laughs> in terms of layout. What's bad about this layout? It's too crowded. 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 Yes, it is very crowded. Um, and your, your eye automatically goes to the middle of this picture, and you don't even know what that picture is. I guess it's a close-up of her hand. Um, like the text is all over the place. There's not really any direction. Um, so it's not, I mean, the best layout. But to be honest, I saw a CD draft cover of a student that had the similar style. <laughs> so you may say, oh yeah, that's bad, I wouldn't do that, but no, students do this kind of stuff. They just place photos anywhere and they place text and then they go on. So that's not what we do, we do smart design. And this is the same message, same pictures, same content, but in a different format. So this, the message really gets across, right? So the text like bounces out at you, north and south of the equator, and then the pictures of the girl is a little bit better arranged. Uh, and what kind of technique is that kind of used for the picture with the pictures on the text? Kind of like a framing, right? Kind of like framing around the text. So it's a much better picture. Law of diminishing returns. Now sometimes it's good to like overcrowd a page. Now this is an advertisement of a poster, and notice. Uh, it's called a dipstick. A dipstick is used to like measure the oil in your car. Um, does anyone have their car or anyone drive here? No? Okay. December. December, you're going to get your license, Joe? All right. So, uh, well, in America, we once you turn 16, you get your license and we drive. So the last two years of school, you usually always drive and you have to check your oil and make sure it's good. So this is a dipstick. And they're advertising for this and then any dipstick can use this oil. And these are all these dipsticks. So notice that the message kind of like ties in with the dipsticks and really gives your message across. So sometimes it's good to overflow a page with information. Emptiness is important. Empty emptiness is essential in life. Uh, sometimes we get so busy and caught up that we don't take time to relax in time. Emptiness is silent. It's an open field like an open field or an empty room or a blank page. Emptiness is often taken for granted. We always think more is better, but just like I told you about the Coke, law of diminishing returns, that's not always the case. Emptiness is generally ignored and not used effectively, and white space is a content in which a message or form is perceived. Okay, so let me give you guys examples. Now when you look at this photograph, for me, I'm just like automatically taken back and my mind is at rest. Um, <laughs> um, on the weekends, this is usually the case, right? <laughs> right on the subway here in Seoul. But during the weekday, especially after work or school, this is the case. So this is an example of empty space and no empty space. You know Central Park in New York? Yeah. I mean, if you've been to the Grand Canyon, I'm pretty sure you've been to New York because New York is a lot more popular. But notice even among the busiest cities, uh, Central Park has empty space. And what is that empty space? And what is that called? Central yeah, Central Park. And a lot of famous movies have been filmed in Central Park because they can get that, the scene with uh, trees and grass and water. But then a few blocks away, there's like the busy city. Negative space. Okay. Do you guys see the neg <laughs> negative space that's used here? What's the animal that's popping out for negative space? Uh, zebra. What does that have uh, It's there. called the peacock. Yeah. Oh, see the peacock right here? See the beak into the purple uh, <coughs> thing? And you guys know what a peacock is, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so that's negative white space. And here, even something simple like a logo, Big Ten uh, logo. You guys see... Yeah, you see um, Big Ten. Did you know Big Ten isn't actually 10 teams? It was 10 teams, but then they made 11. 
So then they use negative space to have this number 11 pop out. And it's actually a little bit creative. Most people think, oh, it's just an indented T, but no, it's an 11. <clears throat> so that's an example of negative space in a po or negative space is positive space that creates uniqueness. Okay, space adds quality. Um, there, I'm going on like on the street. There's this one like just this room with a bunch of like random stuff like just on the floor everywhere. And you just go in with a little bag and then you pick up off the ground and like. There's stuff everywhere, but it's cheap, right? So, you, you guys have Gap here? If you, or like Neiman & Spencer or some fit, like really ritzy store, you'll notice that the, the store is really like, um, late, especially across the river, they have a bunch of fancy stores, and they only have a few items like out, right? They want you to see like, no, there's, we're not flooding our our store with a bunch of junk we're only putting the best like this jacket this like 300,000 jacket that um you want to buy like here it is and then it's like a uh, not much stuff around it and that and this looks like you know a bunch of space so not it doesn't add quality to it um let's skip that one here's good use of white space so notice this this is just like Crowded, no form to it, but then here, where's the white space? Bottom left, so notice that your eye reads it a little bit better. I mean, it's the same words, it's the same text, it's just use of white space. Shading, okay? So you might have a picture of shading, and then you can have a contrasting colors, and it really helps with the eye. Um, if you were to buy one of these paintings, which one looks more expensive? Yeah, the bottom one. And all you did was change the color from white to black for the, some of the shading. So, so quality is based on shading as well. Alignment. So notice this is a typical book cover, standard, but you use white space a little bit more. See the white space? You align it and it looks better, more expensive, better quality. Uh, there's static and active space. Uh, this is just static space, just normal text. This is just like a normal picture. We have the same stuff. I mean, just by indenting it a little bit and moving the text around, you're creating active space. And notice we put one of the bees coming off the edge. Now it looks like the bees are actually moving across the edge instead of just static and limited inside a box. So use motion. Try to create motion with it. Uh, pyramid text. A lot of times people use this, but actually this has more, it's better to start your pyramid top to bottom instead of bottom to top for pyramid text, but either one could be used. Uh, keep the audience guessing. So if you look at this, I mean, it got cut off a little bit, but it's a star, right? Your mind makes you think and look for a star without assuming instead of just putting a normal star in there, just like this. You can crop off an image to make it look a little bit uh, different appearance and perspective on it. Uh, so balance. Try to achieve balance with negative space for that. And keep them reading. So notice with this part, half of the text is cut off, but it, your mind, it makes your mind try to figure out what that word is. So if the word was just there, your eye would just read it and go off the page and go to the next thing. But you actually take a couple more seconds to figure out what the message is. So try to keep them reading for this. Here's something interesting. A lot of use of white space. And notice that the top is actually cut off and flipped. So that was creative. And asymmetrical balance. Okay, notice the balance line is in the middle across the nose. And notice it cut off the nose. And it's using the white space um, or to balance out the guy. So the reason why they cut off the nose is to keep you looking at it like, whoa, he looks weird. Why is their nose cut off? They want you to ask that question, why is the nose cut off? And the whole like article is maybe based on like something to do with his personality and maybe he has a big nose or maybe he can't smell or something. So it's basically drawing in the reader with a picture. Um, and finally, empty space can represent a lot of things, quality. Quality, like we talked about with the stores, solitude, clean, purity, openness, snow, and then there's a difference.